Right, my last guest today was once the highest paid female singer in Britain with hits like Secret Love. That was in the mid-60s. Now she's seen rarely. In fact, she's been on television only once in the last seven years. We're going to change that this afternoon because in a few moments I'll be talking to Cathy Kirby. First, though, a look at her at the height of her fame in 1964. This is how she looked then. <laughs> get by as long as I have you though there be rain and darkness too I'll not complain I But what care I say, I'll get by as long as I have you. Poverty may come to me. But what care I say, I'll get by as long as I have you. Yes, Kathy Kirby in 1964, when guided by band leader Bert Ambrose, she was at the top of the hit parade, had her own TV show, and was packing halls all around the country. From the start of the 70s, though, her life, both professionally and socially, seems to have taken a series of wrong turnings. Television dropped her. And then came the first of what would become habitual headlines featuring her name. The first of two drug overdoses came in 1970. Three years later, a tour in Scotland came to an abrupt end with cancel engagements and angry scenes. Four years later, she was up in court for bankruptcy, ordered to repay debts of £37,000. Her home was raided and she was branded as a liar. Two years ago, after a second drug overdose, she was found guilty of not paying a hotel bill. Homeless, she is sent to a mental hospital in Muswell Hill, where she's befriended by a woman. There are suggestions of a lesbian wedding ceremony, but the woman is sent to Holloway Prison, accused of trying to evade debts. The last two years, though, seem to have halted the downfall. She now lives in a fashionable part of London, and a new record called He came out last week. Cathy will come on to what looks like a promising reversal of that trend in a moment, but first can we get back to the last sort of decade really, which has been pretty disastrous. How could it happen? Is it, are you to blame or are you a victim of circumstance? Well, should we start at the top? I mean, that's a bit of a tall order to follow all the things I'm supposed to have done or what's been written about me, but I remember you opened with um, that television drop me. Well, Simon, actually, through total misunderstanding, I left the BBC um, because I was told that uh, they had nothing else for me after doing a series where I had 18 million viewers with the, and uh, as um, I think it was M Mr. Uh, Sir Hugh Weldon or Sir Michael Peacock said that I revolu revolutionized the viewing um, in bringing back the viewers to the BBC but being told by my agent at that time that I they had nothing else for me when indeed when it was too late and I'd signed with the opposition um, I found out from Bill Cotton that they did have another series for me and um, so I was absolutely heartbroken then the format was changed of the next series um, and so therefore as I thought well it's not going to come up to the standard of the shows that I'd just finished with the BBC and so therefore I left the second I mean we only have and I, I'm not bragging about it but it really wasn't my fault it was through total misguidance and misunderstanding mm. Um, then what was the next? Yes, said, well, from then on, really, I mean, with Bert Ambrose, who was guiding you, really, your career on and off yeah. show business, I mean, he, he died in 1971, and things seemed to sort of fall down. Oh, you said the drug? Uh, well, actually, I was told a year before Bert's death that he was going to die, and I was 
playing at the Theatre Royal Brighton, and I was told um, before a performance one night. And so therefore, I mean, a very young woman, very young indeed, um, after finishing 16 weeks of twice nightly and being on that show right throughout, mm. I just cracked. I couldn't, you know, take any more because I loved this man very, very deeply indeed. And I'm sure that anyone that has um, loved very deeply will understand how um, a young woman that age is told that he will be dead within a year. Mm. You know, you might as well say the person is dead there and then. Um, so I don't think we could really call that a drug overdoses indeed I don't think anybody loves life more than I do mm. but nevertheless you were very close as you said and once he died things seemed to slip away was that because you were too close and that you hadn't been allowed to do things yourself I think um, to be too close I mean one could never be too close that's a very beautiful relationship you know indeed um, yes but, uh, but wasn't allowed I'd... to do things well I lived actually on the stage virtually you know from the age of 16 I spent my whole life traveling and most of the time on the stage or else out um, in restaurants yes I suppose it was a very theatrical life you seem to spend an awful lot of money with there, there were pictures of you in mink coats Simon but never never ever more than I earned mm. you know which is what it's all about I mean I um, about the bankruptcy court business I placed um, you know um, a ring in a certain you know auction rooms but just vanished to pay my tax debt that just vanished and I didn't get back the full value that the ring was worth. You know, so many things. I mean, that the truth hasn't actually been written because all the quotations that I, you know, um, read about myself are not from my lips. You know, so I'm wondering when somebody's going to actually write something that I have said. But are the press making up everything, Cathy? I mean, no, not everything. I, but I, I would like to also make it absolutely clear that um, how ever it got past the news desk about two women getting married mm. you know then it has to be some form of joke because um i was a very happily married woman even though it wasn't for a very long period and indeed um would love to marry again um so i stand on ceremony as saying that um i'm very much the opposite of a lesbian mm. and um that i also read a few weeks ago that um, this person is supposed to have spent, lavished 30,000 pounds on me. Well, indeed, it was the opposite, where uh, all the goods I had left, um, for instance, some, uh, the tip staff returned to me some trinkets that um, Ambrose gave to me that were presents from the royal family. And uh, she took those, uh, a mink coat and a red fox. And uh, I, I said, well, look, these, these are my possessions. You know, you just don't do this one you really don't and I thought well I must do something about it I went to the police station they said oh we'll give it a month so I thought I don't believe this then the same thing happened with a check went to another police station did nothing about it so um what does one do I said well this is not life it's like make-believe but indeed it is very much life yes what happened to all that money though I mean you talk of people sort of taking ah, things well, but, but do you, are you guilty it. really of mismanagement or or was you were you just the victim of people around you a victim of dishonesty you know I yes. mean I, I don't think I'm goody two-shoes <laughs> but I um, feel happy in as much with my characters that I haven't had to resort to lying cheating um, a lot of my money was embezzled from me mm. and as I worked so well uh, I would say a point not only myself but a lot of my show business friends are practically on the cruelty act you know the amount of pressure I was put under mm. that, um, but why didn't you say stop I, I because I, I think being so very young and being told that um, there were plenty more to replace you and that you gain the reputation of being unreliable which although I never missed a performance I'm told that I gained anyhow which is another untruth but it they kind of plucked it out of thin air. There must have been incidents. Well, where... As I walked in today, you said, um, one of the boys here said, oh, Kathy Kirby, always reliable. Mm. And I've heard that. There have been people here who've yeah. said that, that you've always been on the stage on time, yeah. have done a performance on time and very professional. Yes. Perhaps too professional, do you think? Well, that's in, that's in the, a very the... broad statement to, make, to say too professional, which says a lot for our profession today, Simon, I know, it? But, but people can be easily upset because people want things just right and they say, well, she's difficult to work with. I know, I've not heard about, about you, but could that well, be possible? I had the same camera crew for two years, on the set, not one change for two years. Which, you know, when a show goes out once a fortnight, that's not bad going. Mm. And, th and those shows were live with no cue boards 
nothing, you know, so how can you say one thing's too perfect? You know, we had the, the musicians, um, I had sound go off uh, and, and the boom go flying across the studio and then one of the boys kicked it and sent it flying back, you know, but when you've got everyone rooting for you and the audience as well, it was the most exciting feeling, you know, there's a lot of love in the, mm. you know, uh, in the theatre. Yeah, you know, so I, I don't, I, you know, yeah. Uh, it's been said of you, I think by Bert Ambrose, that you're too honest to tolerate lies. Do you find that? Too honest to tolerate... To tolerate oh, I lies. Couldn't, no, um, no he, I think his statement was she couldn't tell a lie to save her life. Mm. You seem very honest, Cathy, and I, and I wonder in a way there that you seem to have picked some wrong ones along the way, haven't you? Both, well, both professionally and, and possibly I'm pretty good at that, Simon. You're quite right there, yeah. Yeah, pretty good at choosing. Because, I mean, I heard a story of that you were engaged once to a man who you subsequently oh, no, found out so... had three children and was married. No, that was another, you know, publicity stunt, you know, but um, um, not, not by myself. I've never indulged in stunts. Mm. You know, I've been um, victimised, but never, ever had to resort to engaging publicity stunts. What now, Cathy? Things look as if they might be turning for the better. You've got a record out, which we're going to hear. released, yes, a week ago. Right, um, but he... it's not getting an awful lot of publicity, and you are not getting an awful lot of publicity. In fact, as I said earlier, you, this is, I think you've been on once on television in the last seven years. Yes, how I... could that be? I think, well, I neglected my career because of um, trying to resolve um, doing other people's work for them, like with, with this bankruptcy business, you know, sorting out I was like the accountant. In fact, one solicitor said to me, your problem is Miss Kirby. He said, you did the accounts too well. So I thought, you know, how do you take that? Um, I, neglect on my part. And then my, a broken marriage, which um, um, made me close to a nervous breakdown mm. because I, I was very much in love with my husband. Um, neglect. I don't know why the boys, um, I, I know most of the disc jockeys uh, we had a very fine relationship, you know, friendly, warm relationship. I don't know why they're not playing my record, but I'm quite sure um, they'll get around to it. I mean, um... It's been a pretty traumatic time, hasn't it? I, I wonder... You seem to have retained your integrity and your honesty. What have you learnt? I, I still uh, would say uh, the same thing that, that I started out in my Careers. To thine own self be true, then thou must find as night must follow day, thou canst not then be false to any man. Mm. And that still applies despite the, yes, some of the people that you've you met? Yes, you lose your identity. I mean, for instance, I went in to see um, a friend of mine at the Talk of the Town uh, last week, and um, Bruce Forsyth, and he introduced me, and the audience, you know, the love and warmth was still there, and I thought, well, if he'd have asked me up, I'd have been up there like a shot. Mm. You know, I really would have. So I don't think that one loses out by not... I mean, it does, I mean, what happened to me, it doesn't happen with performers. I mean, we're a scatty, warm, you know, happy-go-lucky breed of people. There's no, there isn't really animosity amongst performers, you know, the Melissa Martins, the Shirley Basses, the Dusty Springfields. The, the, I haven't found it at all. Competition. But actually, they don't, we, we never even worked like that. It was a great, great, great deal of warmth and fun. No, I can't even say this as if it was like, because it's all very fine talent. It isn't as if there was one sort of also ran. You know, you get a, a certain degree of respect amongst one performer for the other because each was different in their own sphere. Mm. Yeah? So you've got the record coming out and yeah. you've got some dates coming up yes, too. Yes, a new manager, Bruce Spencer, and also some concerts in Skegness for, uh, for the summer. Um, a new recording contract. Uh, I start an LP for Celebrity Records in a few weeks' time. So um, things are moving slowly but positively. Mm. And you can trust people despite the fact of what's happened. Ah, well, I think that if you, st uh, you uh, if you st if you don't give people the benefit of the doubt, then you're going to be a real old grouch. Mm. You know, if you just say, "Oh well, you know, I, I mustn't trust that. I hope you're guilty before you start," you know. You know, there is no justice in the world. Then if we start, you know, saying everyone's guilty until proven innocent, I mean, like going back to an old Bette Davis movie. <laughs> well, I, I, I think I heard her say that in one of her movies. Right. No offence. Well, Cathy, I mean this, really. Take care. Thank you. I think you'll need to. And I, will. And I hope things go well, and I'm sure they, I'm sure they will. I hope so, too. Thank you very All much. All the best. Thank you. We're going to leave you now, and uh, we'll leave you with the sounds of Cathy's latest record. It's called He. Goodbye. Make them all my souvenirs. But where he goes, I've got to be. 
meaning of my life is peace. The meaning of my life.